Hello there, my name is Anna Amelia and I'm from Northeast Animal Rights. Welcome to another talk on all things vegan. Today's talk is called Look Into My Eyes. People say that our eyes are the windows into our souls. We use them to show emotion, happiness, surprise, anger. We show love with them, we flirt with them, but we also use them to show people we are tired and upset or want to be left alone. But this is limited only to, to humans. What about the animal next to you, your dog or your cat? Do you think they are able to tell you how they're feeling through using their eyes? Can you tell when they're feeling sleepy or hungry or when they just want to be left alone? Can you tell what this cat is feeling just by looking at her eyes? What about this, this dog? Now dogs have evolved over the years to manipulate humans into getting what they want. They use their eyebrows to highlight the, highlight the eyes and make us feel guilty for taking them to the vets or guilty for not feeding them straight away or for leaving them when we go to, go to work. But what about the eyes of other animals, animals who we don't have in our homes? We already know that all of these animals have the same sentience. That's finally been recognized in law after much debate over the years. So why do we not take the same time to see these animals and properly see them when, when we see their faces and their eyes? What is it about these animals that we ignore? When we do vigils and we have new members, um, so vigils are when we, uh, we go and bear witness at slaughterhouses. One of the first things we say to new members is try not to look directly into their eyes because they'll haunt you. Vigils are hard enough, but when you make eye contact with an animal moments away from their brutal death, it stays with you. When we take photographs of vigils, we try to be their voice. We take pictures of the trucks to show people the scale of what happens. And we take pictures of the animals inside the truck to show the individuals who are going into slaughter beyond the gates of hell. We take pictures of the activists to show other activists how they can support us and that someone is raising awareness at, at that point. We take, um, we take pictures of flowers that we leave behind to show people that, um, that there is, um, there's a visual me a memorial um, of the animals who were killed that day. But the most poignant pictures that, that we take are those of the animals who are looking at, looking at, at, at us from, out, from inside the trucks. These are terrified animals. These are the ones who, these are the pictures who hit people the most. Um, terrified animals stress because they've had food and water withheld on their journey and be fighting the journey. They're loaded onto a truck and remember that the next time they will see a human will be when they're, when they're taken off the truck and pushed onto the kill floor. They're not shown any tenderness or any compassion. Um, and the slaughterhouse management don't like us taking pictures. Um, one time we had, a, had an issue with them because they said that we were stressing the animals out. Um, they're completely missing the point that these animals are already very, very stressed and they're about to become considerably more stressed when they're getting pushed onto the kill floor. Let's look at some other animals now as well. So what about fish? Um, fish, um, when people are converting to veganism, when they're kind of, kind of like trying to make a conscious decision to have less suffering in their lives and the lifestyle, people will cut out uh, beef, cows, pork, pigs, and then they'll say they only eat a little bit of chicken, a little bit of, um, a bit of, um, a bit of fish. So it tends to be um, cows, pigs, sheep, and then chicken, and fish tends to be usually the last one. Um, so why is it that people kind of think it's okay to, um, to eat fish when they, we know now that they've also been accepted into the, into the, into the law and have them sentenced, and we know that they show, they're capable of showing uh, fear and communicate using their eyes. Um, people say that you know, they refer to fish as being uh, cold um, or, or dead-eyed, um, but that, that doesn't mean they don't feel sentenced. Th that their eyes are like that because they're underwater and they have no need to make direct contact with humans. So why do we think that they don't matter? And also, what about the size of animals as well? It, do we feel that if it's harder to connect with a tiny animal like a mouse, whose eyes are ma ma uh, minute, or the huge animal like an elephant? Where do we draw the line? Do we choose to look away when it suits us? And do we feel guilty looking into the eyes of an animal, knowing that we are about to betray them? So we've been accused many times of humanizing animals. Um, it's the technical term, if I'm gonna get this right, it's called anthropomorphism. It's probably the first time I've said that right all day when I've been trying to say it. Um, but that is us projecting human traits onto animals. Um, looking for human traits and treat, you know, we treat them like humans. On some occasion we treat them like babies and some people will say that they treat their, their animals in the home better than their own children. So we have this in, innate need to treat these animals well and to look after them the best, best of our ability. But why doesn't this transfer onto other animals? So if you look into the eyes of these animals, I'm gonna show you now, tell me what you, know, tell me what you can see. Do you, do you see, see fear, anger, ups, uh, upset, tiredness, happiness? We have the zebra here. 
and then another primid. And this gorgeous, majestic lion. And then we have another primate. So when you see these animals, it's obviously it's hard for us to work out what they're feeling. But we use the eyes to connect with them. And we, we, we do try to project, um, you know, maybe some human traits on them. Um, because that way we can, we can work out, you know, if we can project these human traits onto these animals, we feel as if um, we, we understand them a little bit better. But take a look at this next animal. So this is an animal who is already long, long dead. This was an animal. Um, this was a beautiful cow, a very young cow, who was in a truck in a, um, outside the slaughterhouse. And we were able to take a picture of this animal before they went to the death, the other side. So we can see quite clearly that this animal, we, we know that because we were there, we could smell and we could hear and we could see this animal. This animal was very, very stressed along with the other animals um, in the truck. Um, you know, very, very stressed, very confused, hungry and tired. Um, and our um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to protect this animal, but we couldn't. We were, we were absolutely helpless. But do you feel love and empathy and, um, and helplessness and frustration by looking in, the, looking in the eyes of this animal in the same way that we do? So when you're out and about, take a look into the, the, the eyes of other animals you come across. Animals in pet stores, animals in, in, in aquariums and zoos, and animals on farmland. But take a moment to connect with the individuals, not just seeing them as you know, one animal in a herd of animals, one animal in, you know, in, in, a, in a cage full of other animals as well. Look at them, there's all, there are all individuals and they all have, have different personalities. They all have different needs, different wants. Um, and they all have, you know, they have a need to be, to be left alone, to be not to be used by humans for, for money, for, you know, to exploit it for the, for the table or exploit it in vivisection. All of these animals just need us to leave them alone. So if you can connect with these animals, if you see these animals and you really, really, um, you know, you can see a connection between the animals in your home and the animals you, you are seeing in a pet store, in an aquarium or, um, or in a farmland, then you have to, have to ask yourself, is there any difference between the animals in your home? Is there any difference between a dog or a cat and the pig and the cow and the sheep and the chicken who are being taken to slaughter or the animals in labs who are being, being tormented and tortured? And if you can, if you can see no difference, then ask yourself why you're not vegan. If you are already vegan, brilliant, well done, great. Please, please continue to spread awareness. We need to speak out for animals. It's not just about not eating them and not exploiting them directly. We also need to advocate for them as well. So that's my talk for today. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you found that interesting and give you something to think about. If you like what we do, please follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, we're on TikTok, we're on Instagram. We have two accounts on Instagram, one under our group name, and also one under Tyneside Vegan and Music Festival. And we have a very small YouTube channel, which we would love you to subscribe to for free as well. So I'm going to sign off now. So my name is Anna Melia from Northeast Animal Rights. Thank you and goodbye for watching. Thank you, thank you and goodbye for watching. <laughs> Start that again. Goodbye and thank you for watching.